of a series that I call Multiply, or how you know, God is calling us to multiply. You know, uh, in the beginning, God said, be fruitful and multiply and have dominion over the earth. And there are other places in the Bible where he really uh, talks about multiplication. He gives us talents and he wants us to multiply. It's all about multiplication. God wants us to multiply. Uh, and so uh, the question is, are we multiplying? And last week I talked about kind of the qualities of the fruit that God has that he wants us to bear. Because as we bear fruit, uh, we will multiply. Because not only, uh, the, you know, when we, when we bear the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, forgive me, translators, um, that uh, you know, when, we, when, we, when we bear those, you know, that's a beautiful thing. And it shows people like, wow, the beautiful fruit of the Spirit. But if we just have... If we just have that aspect of the fruit, then all we are is a bunch of nice people. I mean, that'd be good if everybody in the world was like that, but the other part of it is power. The Holy Spirit has given us power, and power to bear fruit, and to bear fruit that lasts. And that power, we, we can use the Holy Spirit's power to uh, multiply the kingdom of God through signs and wonders. We, as, we, as we pray for people, people will recognize that God is among us. And then when they recognize that God is among us, yeah. I'll tell you a story, uh, uh, just quick, that I, I met this one person. I won't, can't really just tell them who, can't tell you who it is. Uh, but they were uh, a leader. And they and I was talking to them about going into the area that they were in, and uh, and uh, uh, you know sharing, doing different uh, things, programs, stuff, things that we do. And uh, and they said to us, they said to me, they said, when when you go there, can you tell, can you, can you not tell people that they have to leave everything and come to Jesus, you know? Because you know what happened is they've had an experience with that before. And I, I said, well, it's not kind of what we do. Um, it's not how we do it. And then they said to me, they said, because if you pray for someone in the name of Jesus and they get healed, do you have to really share anything else? I said, no, not much. When the power of God falls on people, they will recognize who he is. And after that, it's simple. So we have to bear fruit, and, and part of that fruit is showing power. And God has given us the Holy Spirit, right, that we can, we can lay hands on the sick. The Bible says these signs will follow them that believe. They will lay hands on the sick, and they shall be well. Amen? Okay, boy, tough crowd today. What happens when you boil your funny bone? What happens when you boil your funny bone? You become a laughing stock. No good? Okay. Uh, a, a priest, uh, I can't say that one. A priest and a government official and a rabbit walked into a bar. And the rabbit says, I think I'm a typo. Never mind. <laughs> some of you will get that. Some of you will have no idea. Uh, and if you're translating, you know, just tell them when to laugh. Um, okay. I'm going to read a couple of scripture verses. We're going to jump right in. <laughs> John chapter 4. Jesus explains, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God. Who sent me and from finishing and from finishing his work you know the saying four months between planting and harvest but I say wake up and look around the fields are already ripe for harvest the harvesters are paid good wages and the fruit uh, they harvest is people brought to eternal life so in this parable he's saying four months he's talking about harvest right so we know what the harvest is the harvest is those that don't yet know him and it's interesting, he says, the harvesters are paid good. He's not talking about me. He's talking about us. Did you know you're paid well? Yeah, he gave you a deposit guaranteeing your inheritance. He gave you a deposit that you will live forever and ever. Trust me, he pays you well. Are we catching this? Is it just me? And then he says, 
It's ready. It's time. It's time that we begin to bear fruit. It's time that we begin to multiply. Can I get an amen? All right, but that wasn't really the main verse. The main verse was out of John chapter 12, verse 23. Let me read. The hour has come that the Son of Man is to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless the kernel of wheat falls in the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves his life will lose it, and anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will also be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now, the story here is Jesus has come in on the donkey. You know, he came in, and, uh, and uh, you know, everybody was yelling, Hosanna, and all this stuff, and he says to his disciples, the time has come for me to be glorified. He's basically talking about his death. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And then he, then he, then he kind of just goes this like, I think it's a crazy route. To, to me, there's not a whole lot of logic why all of a sudden after he says the time, time has come that, you know, for me to be glorified, yeah, a kernel of wheat must die. Uh, but there is a whole lot of wisdom in what he's talking about. And we talked a little bit about it last week, but we're going to talk about it very much this week in terms of how, how, we bear fruit, how we multiply, how we become more than just one. How do we multiply? How do we do that? That's, that's what we're going to talk about. And John 15, he says, when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples, and this brings glory to my Father. So it's funny, I, I, again, I said it last week, I'll say it again, this idea of true uh, disciples. So there are those who just follow, which really aren't really disciples, they're just following, and then there are true disciples, those who are truly following. He said it, not me. I find it to be interesting. Never mind. I have something. I, I just got to avoid saying what I have in my mind. I'll just get in trouble. And then he says in Ephesians chapter 2, he says, we are, <coughs> excuse me, we are, <coughs> maybe I did drink. We are God's work, uh, uh, handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works that he has prepared for us in advance. So you know that his work's in front of you, that he's already like prepared for you? Like it means he's done all the work for you. They're right in front of you. That's why sometimes you get nervous about problems. Nope, those problems are God's opportunity to reveal himself. And he's got those problems in your future. And as you walk in, it's all prepared for you. You're like, God prepared a problem for me. You know, it's funny, we were singing that song. You are my champion. You know, uh, he says, undefeated, right? He says, you're undefeated. It's interesting because you know in the, uh, boy, I'm really getting off. How much time do I have? Not enough. I'll get into one section. That's all I'll need. But, you know, in, in other writings, like in the Egyptian writings and stuff in years past, they, it, when they were kings, they would never put the defeats in the, in the documentation in history. So if a king had a defeat, they wouldn't document it. They only wanted to show all the winning things. It's interesting in the Bible that that's not how it works. He shows all, the, in the Bible, it shows all the good, uh, all, all, what, all, the, all, the, all the victories, and all the defeats. And, and so you say, well, wait a minute. He said he's undefeated. Yeah, because you've got to read Je uh, Revelation chapter 22. Because in the end, it's all victory. Everything is all victory. So just know in your life, in the end, it's all victory. Can I get an amen? It might look like defeat right now, but that's just a setup. That's just what he's preparing to reveal himself. Never mind. My too deep, that's off topic. Okay. Now, today I want to talk about uh, basically this idea of a seed dying. Okay? Because he said, a seed must fall in the ground and die, or it remains alone. Now, he's talking about his death. But let's just talk about a seed. See, I brought one up. Did you know this is a seed? Sometimes it's like your head, but that's a whole other story. This is a seed. It's a coconut seed, right? So basically he's saying a seed must fall in the ground and die or it remains basically a single seed. So if I open this up and I drink its inside, you know, that's it. It's done. But he says it must fall in the ground and die, or it will remain alone. Now, 
what's interesting is inside this seed is everything it needs to become what God has destined it to be. When you come to Jesus, he puts the Holy Spirit in you, and you have everything inside you already to become what he has destined you to be. Can I get an amen? See, sometimes we think we, we like, I need this. I need, you, you don't need anything. You have everything you need. The Bible says in, in Peter, you have everything you need for life and godliness. He has deposited the Holy Spirit in you, and just like this seed has a destiny, has everything in it it needs to become what God wants it to be, you are that same kind of type of seed. Amen? So don't worry about what you have or don't have. You have everything you need. I need you to say amen one more time. Yes, sometimes I need you to say amen to yourself about that truth. You know, so turn to the person next to you and say, I have everything I need. Yeah, you don't need any more money. You don't need any more skill. Many of you think, you know, I, I hear it all the time. You know, uh, uh, I, I say, hey, go out and tell someone about Jesus. I don't know enough. You have all the knowledge you need. If a blind guy can just simply say, I don't know. Once I was blind, now I can see, and he did it. That's, all you, that's about all the knowledge you need. Some of you think you have to explain the whole universe to someone to get saved. All you have to do is introduce them to the king. That's all you have to do. So anyways, that's a side issue. So a seed must fall in, in the ground. Unless a seed, a kernel of wheat, falls in the ground and dies, it remains alone. It remains a single seed. Now, what the heck does that mean? Well, let me just try to make it simple for you. So this seed has everything it needs to become what God has destined it to be. You have everything in you that you need to become what God has destined you to be. But it's scary. I think what happens with us, and just like this seed, what happens with us is this is our form right now. The seed, this is the form of the seed. This is our form. And it's scary. Oh, no, water. And this is why I don't drink. We will live. We will live. And if we die, we will live. Sorry, guys, you got some clean, clean up on aisle seven. Clean up on aisle seven. <laughs> Thank God it didn't get on my, my, my iPad. This has a certain form. And for it to become what God is destined it to be, it must kind of surrender and trust that the new form that is being formed is what God is destining it. Des destining it. You, you understand what I'm saying? And I think when we, say, when we talk about form, the seed has an identity. And so, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And this is why I don't drink water. I don't think I have had a sip of water last time. I can't remember the last time I did that on, on, on the platform. But anyways, he has to, like, surrender his identity. That's a hard thing to do. We have to trust God that the form that we have now, that what he has destined for us is way better than what we think we are now. That's the death process. See, it's not so much like, well, how do I die? Well, one way is to say, God, I died to my identity. I die to what I think I am in order to become what you want me to be. That's hard to do. That's why he uses the term, you, you just want my, my, my iPad to get water on it. I mean, what are you putting it over there for? Just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's why it's so, he, that's why he uses the word death. 
Because it's like, that, that's what surrender is. It's like death. It's like, I've got to actually, like, trust that what I let go, what I let go, I mean, I'm a cool seed. Some people say to you, you're a cool seed. And, 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 and the funny part about it is, this, 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 to become what it's destined to be, it won't be for him. It won't be for that seed. That seed will disappear. That's exactly what happens, you know. All of a sudden, uh, 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 it's in the ground and a, a shoot comes out of it. And this, all around it, starts getting brown. And it actually ends up like, and then actually roots start coming out of this. That's what will happen. Roots will come out. So there'll be a stem and then there'll be roots come out. And, and, and all of a sudden, it will be cracked open. And it will basically, it won't die. It will become. But what it is today, you won't, you will all right, show it what, it, you, we know what it's going to become, right? Can you put that up? That's what it's going to become, right? What do you call this? Yeah, coconut tree. Thank you for, thank you. Appreciate that. Like that. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a coconut tree. We don't say, that's a coconut. We say, that's a coconut. That's a coconut tree. And what does a coconut tree do? It produces many of these. A seed can't produce another seed. You want to multiply? A kernel must fall or a seed must fall in the ground and surrender and die to itself. When it dies to itself, this thing does a lot. This thing does a lot more than even just that. It provides, it provides shelter. It provides, you know, uh, birds. It, it, you know, all of that stuff. All the things that you read in the Bible. You know, a mustard seed becomes the biggest uh, plant and, and birds can take rest in it. You know, we, we get shade out of it. You know, we, it's, it's so useful. This thing, this thing's got some use. It's got some. got some use. It's got a one-time use. You open it up. You drink it, and that's the end. That's not multiplication. So what does that mean? I must let go of what I want. I must fall into the ground, into the soil of God. Let's just say it that way. I must surrender. Say, God, I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. And the more you hold on to your form, the less you will become that. The more you strive to hold on to who you are and, and, and what you think you are, and the less you just say, God, do whatever you want to. Then you'll stay this way. Or you'll become that. And, and, and this thing doesn't know it can be that. Not really. And I'm telling you, you can know you can be that. And I'm telling you how. The interesting thing, the difference between this and you, is this thing doesn't really have a whole lot of will. You do. And that's part of the death process. And that's why Jesus showed us in just a few days after this whole thing. He's in the garden, and he's like, not my will, but thy will be done. He struggled with that. It wasn't easy. It says he was praying so hard that, you know, his sweat was like blood. And he's like, not my will. He's like, I don't want to do this. How many of you? I don't want to do this, God. I want to stay who I am. This is my identity. This is, this is who I am. You made me this way, God. Yes, I made you this way. So you become that way. Ooh, I made you this way so that you would become something so much greater. 
but she got to die. I'm going to share one more thought. I may share a little bit more. I don't have time to go. Boy, there's so much in here, and I haven't even got close, but that's a good truth right there we can hold on to. Let me, let me, give, you, let me give you one more side truth that relates uh, just in my studies. You know what's really interesting is that, you know, here comes Jesus. He comes in, right? He's, I should save this stuff for Easter, but it's too late. Um, he comes in on the donkey, right? Now, I don't know if you know this, but when he came in on the donkey, basically on the other side, Pilate was coming in, riding on a majestic horse. And everybody is screaming to Jesus, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us. He's, they're not thinking eternal life. They're thinking, take that man down. Take Rome down. We want you to be our king. We want you to be our conqueror. We want you to come out of the, uh, we want to come out of the oppression that we're under. Did you remember what Julie, uh, U- Julia just, Juliana just shared about coming, taking the step of faith? Okay. Now, what's very, very interesting is after they say Hosanna, here comes Here comes Pilate, long story after that, but then what happens is we see the scene of Barabbas and Jesus. Right? Barabbas and Jesus. And what happens? All the crowd that had once yelled, Hosanna, save us, was saying, crucify him. We want Barabbas. You know what's going on there? You know what they're saying? They're saying, We want the way of Barabbas to save us and deliver us. We don't want the way of Jesus. We want the way of Barabbas through violence, through conquering, through take, because he was a Zionist. And so we want him to, we want, we want to go the way of taking Pilate out when Jesus is saying, that's not the way to become this. What am I talking about? As you're trying to become this, you have choices, big time choices. I don't like how much I'm waiting. So now I'm going to take it into my own hands. I'm going to do it the Barabbas way. I'm going to do it the forceful way. I'm going to do it the violent way. I'm going to do it the way of the world. I'm going to go that way because it's not happening fast enough for me. And I don't want to die like that. I want to conquer. So many different places in your life, in our life, in my life, that we do this. Instead of going the way of death and waiting for God to slowly make you become who you are, who you're destined to be, we say, no, we want Barabbas' way. We want to lie, cheat, steal. No, I won't forgive. Every time... The next time you are sitting in offense, when you're offended, and you don't want to forgive, just say it this way. I want Barabbas! That's the truth. That's a deep truth for you. I hope you can handle it. But, uh, you know, that was a freebie. It wasn't planned. But, you know, you get what you get, and you don't get upset. Um, Well, you might get upset. So two things today. That's all I'm going to share. Two things today. One, unless a kernel falls in the ground and dies, it stays this shape. It stays this way. It never finds its true destiny. It must fall in the ground and die. Die to itself. Die to its identity. Die to everything and just say, God, Do whatever you want to do. Whoo. So much freedom in that. Every time I say it, you're like, how is there freedom in that? Because there's no more struggle when you die. When you finally give up your own ways, there's no more struggle. Number two, as you try and let God do that in your life, which way are you going to choose Are you going to choose the way of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. See? See, it all flows together. 
Are you going to choose that direction? Are you going to choose to wait and let God do what he does in you? Are you going to say, God, I've got, these, I've got this identity and, and I've got these feelings, so, so they must be who I am. No. Just wait and become. Let God help you become. And don't choose the way of Barabbas. Hard-headed, my way, the world's way, violence, anger, murder. That's what he was. Because if you don't, if you keep not choosing Barabbas and choose the way of God, you will become a beautiful, a beautiful thing that in God's hand. A beautiful pot, as we see in the, in the Old Testament where he says, you'll become this beautiful uh, vessel of honor. You'll become a beautiful tree. And no one will end up calling you a coconut anymore. They'll call you a tree. And they won't call you a, you know, kraskapala. You know, hard head, yeah? Actually, to be honest with you, when after this thing dies, it's really easy to peel. You ever notice that? Like when it's really dead and everything, it's already grown. It's like this thing just falls off really easy. You know? But when it's like this, it's still hard, just like our sometimes our stubbornness, yeah? Those are the only two thoughts I'm going to give you today since the time is short, but I really enjoyed our worship, so I was not in any hurry to get to the Word. If you, if you just came, if you, have, if you have never been to one of our meet and greets, like you, you've only been here for a few weeks, and you'd like to come just say hello to us, if you're a first-time visitor, please come say hi to us. I'd love to say hi to you. Um, tell you a little bit about New Tribe. But uh, we're going to close in prayer. Um, half the team is here. Calling all worship team. Calling all worship team. I'm going to pray, and then um, do whatever you want to do. Okay. Would you stand with me? Raise up your hands. And you know what? You is it okay? You don't have to do this. If this is not, you might want to even stop halfway through it after you realize what I'm going to do. But if you would be willing. To pray this prayer, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna say a few words. You, you follow along with me, yeah? Okay, let's try that. Lord Jesus, help me to fall in the ground and die. Lord, I surrender my my identity. I surrender my wants my desires because I know your identity and your wants and desires are going to make me so much better I know it's a lot of words Lord I want to choose the way of the spirit I don't want to choose Barabbas' way forgive me Lord Forgive me, Lord, for the times I chose the wrong way. Forgive me for the times I didn't want to die to myself. But today I'm going to try to say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you lead that with me?